Welcome to the Cheetah Outreach. Cheetah. Okay, it's time for me to do my feet. Okay, well done. Um, it's not touching, not doing the touching at the moment. And you guys are going to go inside and speak to them. Um, so for that, it is $165 on the $165. Okay. Um, it's an ATM here. Yeah, it's around. But I don't mind. You can go in, but for the kids, it's a little bit. But. So, he might be too loud and they get us into the Okay, sure, sure. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, and you? Okay. I'm just going to scan you while you do that. Yeah, I had a cap on just now. <laughs> it, oh, yeah, no, but it's still good though. 36.2. 36.2. Okay, so 36.2 for you, 36 for her. You guys don't have any symptoms, no coughing, no sore throat, no headaches. Do you want to do the experience? What do you want to do? I don't know. So the experience, you guys don't do the, the touching at, at this stage. You guys you get to go in with them and be close to them and they'll talk to you more about Okay, we do the experience as well. Yeah? Okay, yeah. so... Uh, so you want lots of money? Yeah. Okay, so that's entrance is 20 each, and then the experience is 160 each. So that'd be 323, 4360. Okay, perfect. So when you guys go through, you'll see there's like a, a little thatch roof area where you guys can just go okay, thank you. for the encounter. Thank you. Encounter. All right. Thank you. Thank you. What's that, a hyena? <laughs> Sorry, where do we go for the experience to the... Oh, here. Okay. To here. All right, super. Uh, EMT or experience yes. or something, yeah? Yes, that's the one. Sorry, I'm David. This Hi, is Hi, I'm Melanie. You guys ready? Yep, we're ready. Hi, okay. are okay, you still good? Yeah, I'm It's a bit like a prison, isn't it? Yeah? Mm. Radio through. <laughs> Radio through. Just to make sure that the cap is settled. <laughs> That we're going to be visiting is called Romeo. Um, he's about five years old at the moment. Um, he is a fully grown cheetah despite the, the small age that he found. Um, from about two years on, they're considered full grown adults. Okay. Um, yeah, so he's definitely not going to be growing any taller, maybe wider, depending on food intake. <laughs> um, yeah, he has a kind of adopted brother that was in that first enclosure there. Um, and at the end of the day, they all put together and they groom one another and, and spend the evening with one another. Um, we primarily separate them to obviously give them some time away from their siblings, but also so that we can do encounters like this and minimize the risk of us just having one cat at a time. And the dogs we saw when we came in, mm. are they, you're breeding them? Yes. So they are bred up in the Limpopo province. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're actually breeding those dogs so that we can place them on farmland. Um, and then they're there to protect the farmer's livestock against any kind of predator that's in the area. Um, and by having them there, they're a non-lethal means of predator control. So that means that the farmer won't put out any poison meat or traps or even try and shoot a predator in the area. Mm. And by having that, we're protecting the cheetahs that are currently in the wild. All right. So we'll be going in to visit Romeo. You're welcome to follow me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you can just stand on the fence line for me. Okay. So <laughs> Are you getting nervous now? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome to find So this is Romeo, as I was saying. <laughs> you can see he's nice and relaxed with his handler. He knows Harry very well. He's known him since he was a cub, so very, very well attached. Um, and this is kind of their natural day-to-day um, -day activity, kind of resting until they actually need to, to move, whether it's for a predator or um, it's time to catch some prey. Um, so it's like an afternoon nap? Yes. So like most cats, they mm -hmm. like to sleep most of the day. Um, we do sometimes try and take them on a walk around the facility. So we took two of our boys earlier today. Um, and we do have a long run enclosure as well where we can set up a lure. Then they can chase after that lure to actually get some exercise. But it's totally up to them. So sometimes we'll put the cats in there and they won't care about the lure. And they would rather just have a sniff around and lie down again. Um, so yeah. So if we were to stoop down, it would see it as an invitation to come and... Yes, yeah. So anything smaller than a cheetah is considered their prey okay. um, or possible prey. So by you kneeling down, it's kind of going within that eyesight range and it's possible that they might come over to you. So we just don't want you to kind of be inviting that to happen. Um, but by standing tall, we look a little more intimidating, more like a predator. Um, it's also why we give them their space so that yeah. we're not crowding them and making them feel uncomfortable. Um, their go-to thing is to run away from anything that's worrying them. Again, why we give them space. So if they are feeling uncomfortable in any way, they can get up and move and we'll also exit the enclosure and give them that space. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so everything is done on their terms and to make sure that they're comfortable and obviously you're safe during this. So Harry, how long have you been handling this Romeo? Um, yeah, last sort of, basically his whole life since uh, he was about, I only trained when he was 18 months old. He's lying on you like he's yeah like you're his yeah. mummy. He's using my knee like a pillow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like to go behind him and get a photo with him? No, I'm good. I, no, I'm quite you're happy. happy. Like this. Okay. Quite happy. <laughs> no, it's not about fear or anything. It's yeah. just about whichever you would prefer. <laughs> it's he looks better in the picture like this. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's nice to be able to see them up front. Yeah. You can see how he is sensitive to movement and noise, so people coming up the run, he instantly looked up to see what was going on. But generally, if it is something that they're used to, they'll just put their head back down and probably go back to sleep. Um, only if it's something that's really alarming, that they're not sure what it is, will they get up and actually run. I think earlier on when I started speaking, he opened his eyes, it must be my accent. <laughs> yeah, so they definitely do get used to people's tone of voice, and that is why generally we'll enter an enclosure and we'll call out to them as we're walking towards them, so that they realise who we are and that we they know us and that kind of thing. But they also have very good eyesight, they can see up to five kilometres away. So, I mean, they've seen us, even if they're on the corner there, they've seen us coming up the run long before we even see them, so. Mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and there's some more over there. Yes, yeah, so those are the two boys, those are the two brothers that we actually walked around the facility earlier. Um, they are retired, so we don't generally do um, encounters with them. Um, we've done one or two with Phoenix lately um, since the lockdown, um, but primarily they're in retirement. So. so don't they get like dogs, like you put two males in the same enclosure, isn't that a problem? It's a problem if they haven't grown up together or they're not siblings. Okay. But because Pedro and Phoenix have lived their whole lives together, they're very closely bonded. So you'll actually sometimes see them grooming each other on the face and the body. Um, so they love being together. They actually call out for each other. There's something known as a chirp. They actually make this little noise when they're separated, yeah, kind of communicating. Um, but if we were to put either of those boys in here with Romeo, then it would be absolutely a problem. Okay. And he's good. Romeo, do you like the sound of the camera? <laughs> Alright, that's ours then, eh? Thanks, thanks Harry. See, nothing happens to you. <laughs> Oh, 
welcome to Step Through and my colleague will walk you back to the reason. <laughs> He's looking for some attention. Hey? When's his feeding time? Uh, oh, that's why he's walking up and yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's like I mean. saying, "What time's it, folks?" <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much eating time? So now we just walk around, eh? Yes, yes, no, you just walk around, yeah. Just to walk around and just go, you just gonna go around that way. Thank oh, all right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, but here we go, mind the steps. Well, you found the tortoise. Here's baby ones, this is right. Baby tortoise. They're small, eh? Eat the grass. <laughs> Look, you missed them. I think it's meerkat. <laughs> hey? Yeah, I'm, I'm missing that. I thought they're looking anywhere. Oh my god. It's meerkat. It's what BMW drivers get accused of oh, doing. Oh, look at it. Now look at the other one in the pipe. No? Look at the one in the pipe. Inside the pipe. Oh, yeah. Uh, names are Sebastian and Minky. Sebastian's like 14 years old. Minky is 11. Hello. Hello. I, Hello. It's a bit What's name, darling? Hey? What name? What's his name? I don't know. Here is a caracal. Oh, you never see that. Oh, send the cat? Yeah, it's four years old. But it'll probably be sleeping at this time of the day. It's early afternoon. I don't see anything in here, do you? What do you have? Oh, like I send the cat. Yeah, I think they're sleeping in the house. You make this pet, no? Huh? You can see that. We just came at the wrong time of the day. Do you feed the animals close by or in the cages? Uh, you mean if you go in for encounter? Oh, we've been in and out yeah. again. Uh, well, it's... we're going to feed just now if you want to hang around for that. But I mean, you can't, you won't be going into enclosure, but you'll feed oh. them quite close. Alright, thanks. The smaller animals, and then you keep coming in. Are you finished? Did you hear that? Where's the baby? Inside the... Yeah. Inside the hatch there. Yeah. It's getting louder. No. Oh, there's a bite in. Can you see them? No, not a baby. This one, this one tiny because it's another one by the tongue. Yeah, that one can take photo of them. The side. I don't know whether it's a girl or a boy. I think the boy. Girl. Girl, I, darling. No, I, how do you know? When, when we see the boy, there's hey? no egg. 
No eggs. Uh, I think so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. Yo, boy. I see eggs. Egg in the towel. Oh, you think coming, Yeah. <coughs> Are you hungry? Your food's coming, mate. He's gonna come closer, I would imagine. Here we go. I don't have food for you. I never heard a, a cheetah cry before. Hello? That's very cool, eh? We just have a good look, thanks Helen. Yeah, right. He's our biggest cheetah. Runs he's, he seems to be the hungriest. In South Africa, the ones that are outside of protected areas, so not inside a game reserve or not inside Kruger, they are doing very badly. And there's fewer than 500. He's 10 now, so he's pretty old. They usually only get to 12 or 13 with us. But they're in a park like Kruger, they, they can hunt good enough. Yeah, Kruger's so. its own little bio, biome and, and you know, um, conservation mm. for biodiversity. But game reserves that have cheetahs are, are problematic because you can't have other predators in there. Otherwise, they don't, they don't do well. They lose out on prey, they get pushed yeah. out of the area. <laughs> So unfortunately, a lot of cheetahs are free roaming and they come into human habitat, which is fun. And they're often blamed for killing livestock. So mm. it's more often leopards or hyenas or other predators, even small predators. Mm. So they're, they're in big trouble with farmers and they will persecute them on that basis. Mm. Mm. That's why we breed the dogs. I don't know if you've got a dog. Juliet is an Anatolian. Um, and we can use the breed for farmers. And they guard the large farm. And it's more effective for the farmers. Kiki, you have to move. Come on. You've been here all day. Come on. Kiki. Hmm.
Oh, and then the one no, not him, darling. He's still crying. Still hungry. So, if you enjoyed this, you want to go? Cheers, guys. See you here. Yeah, he's still hungry. No, he's hiding. Yeah. He's had enough of the limelight. He he's had enough of the limelight. <laughs> Should we go? Called a bat eared fox. Um, he also finishes very slowly. So bat eared fox. One's called Forrest, one's called Janet. Diggory and Firefox. I think a lot of the people here are volunteers. All got four by fours. Did we come in this way? Okay, so you can buy cheetahs here. All different stuff. Uh huh. Even some caps. It's a lovely homestead. Look, stunning. Mm. Hello. Looks like it was printed from a photograph. See it, sense it, save it. That's very nice. See it, sense it, save it. Are you looking for us? You have to keep an eye on who's still on site. Who's still on site? On site, yes. Yeah. So who's still on the premises? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah.